Zaya come and I got engaged. And then he showed me the box of the ring. And then I was, I was just like, oh, oh, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Hello you guys, welcome back to another vlog. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, if it's your first time stopping here, hi, my name is Giselle. I make lifestyle videos, travel videos. If you like this kind of videos, then subscribe and stick around. So yeah, I've never made one of these videos, you guys, like um, <laughs> a live update video. I've never made one of these kinds of videos. And a couple of things have happened that I thought to myself, I think it'd be better if I just put everything together in one video instead of, I don't know, putting bits and pieces here in different videos. So the very first big news is that Joachim and I got engaged. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joachim and I got engaged. I'm trying to get this video out before the light completely disappears on me. So if I'm rushing, please, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, but yes, so the very first big news is that Joachim and I got engaged. And this happened like a couple of weeks ago already. I mentioned it on Instagram, but I never mentioned it on YouTube. Yeah, and I just wanted to also share with you guys how it went, what happened, what he planned, just so that I can also look back at this video and just remember the day. Um, but yeah, this is what the ring looks like. Um, yeah, it has a gold band, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and I didn't know. I mean, I, we had had this conversation, so I kind of knew that was going to happen at some point, say in the next year, but I did not know it was going to happen this year. So. Yeah, it's really nice. So now I am in the process of planning a wedding, which whew, the biggest thing is looking for a venue. Honestly, we are still in the end of 2023, right? We're in October. I'm trying to look for a venue for next year, September as well. So a year from now. And literally 90%, no, 70% of the things that I have come across, the people I have reached out to, they are booked out for 2024. So they are booked out for a whole year in advance. That is crazy. So yeah, I'm trying to filter out what is left because I'd really like it to be next year. I mean, it's a whole year from now, right? I knew, Jochen also knew that I'd like to have it. Um, I'd like to have a very private in, um, engagement. But it was Saturday morning and he woke me up around six o'clock and I'm like, what is it? Don't wake me up at six o'clock on Saturday. Like I want to sleep, you know? He woke me up and he was like, oh, please, I cannot sleep anymore. I'm like, what is wrong? He's like, look, <laughs> I'm sleeping my eyes. And he was like, look, look. I was like, look at what? And then he showed me the box of the ring. And then I was, I was just like, oh, oh, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> then he had a speech that he made. It was a really long speech. I didn't even think I remember anything to, that he said during the speech. I don't remember because I was still like waking up from sleep. And I still also in the middle of, oh, this is happening. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have put on my light. And so you're going to see my reflection in the back. I really don't want to lose the light outside, but I am. So I have to substitute with something else. So yeah, after the speech, then he um, asked me, uh, will you marry me? And I was like, yes, of course. And then he was like, okay, we have something planned for the weekend. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, I pack a suitcase, um, but just for one night. He booked the hotel for one night. It was the Hyatt. I've never been to the Hyatt. It's a really nice hotel here in Berlin. Um, we went there, we spent the day there, um, just chilling. <laughs> yeah, we went to the pool, we're swimming, and then it also has a really nice view over Berlin. So we went outside as well to the deck, or yeah, to the deck, I'll call it. And we just sat there, basked in the sun. It was in the middle of summer, so it was really nice. Um, and then after that, he also booked um, or reserved dinner at a, a Middle Eastern restaurant. So we also went there for the dinner. Um, yeah, the dinner was really nice. I've never been to this restaurant. It's in Prenzlauer Berg. Um, we went there. The food was really nice. And then after dinner, he also had reserved a place at a certain bar that we had also never been to, but we both always wanted to check it out. So um, I forgot what the name of the place is, but I have, the, I have some videos. I'll put everything on the screen as I'm trying to explain. Yeah, so we went there. We were there, I think, for like one hour max. We had some really nice cocktails. The place is so vintage. The vibe is so nice. The people were so chill. The music was beautiful. Like the whole ambience, everything put together. The lighting, the how not so loud people were, but also not so quiet. The the cups in which they brought the cocktails in. I think Yahum's cocktail was even in the coconut, like an actual coconut. 
um, but the cocktails were nice. It's also so affordable. I expected this place, I expected a cocktail here to be like 20 euros. But I think it was like average price, 13, 14 euros. Yeah, we just went back to the hotel with very, very full stomachs. We went back, chilled, watched a movie. Um, I'm just looking at my plants. The leaf is dying and I don't know why. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm all over the place. Um, I even have an appointment in 30 minutes, so I need to finish this and get to my appointment in 30 minutes. But it was just such a wholesome weekend, it was so nice. Uh, the fact that he planned out all of this and I had no idea, it was really, really nice. So yeah, that's the first really, really big news that I have to share with you guys. Um, on Instagram, I already received so many sweet messages, so thank you guys so much if you already wrote to me on Instagram. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the second news is that um, I found out that I have fibroids. So this is quite common, but also not really. And it's quite common because statistics say between 50 to 80% of women are going to have fibroids and 80% of black women are going to have fibroids. So if you don't know what fibroids are, um, they're a non-cancerous tumor that grows inside or around the uterus. Sometimes they could cause like issues such as pain, a lot of pain when you have your period. They can cause like back pain. They can cause just this overall discomfort, very heavy bleeding during your periods. Yeah, so about two months ago, I had this pain in my waist and I was like, what the hell? Like I've never felt pain in this place. Where is this coming from? Um, and then suddenly I started to feel that the um, the the lower part of my belly was getting really hard and I was like what could this be and at the time I was doing <laughs> at the time I was doing ab exercises in the gym I was like oh my abs are coming out but I was like how can the abs only come out at the bottom you know like below my belly and not all over the belly um yeah so I went to the doctor oh my god that's another thing the struggle to for them to be able to find out exactly what I was going through was something in Germany everybody has a GP right um if you don't feel well you go to your GP if you need more checkup then your GP sends you to the hospital so I didn't have a GP and sometimes the waiting list is really long so I called one of the ones close to me with good reviews I told him hey I'm really not feeling well I've been in a lot of pain for four months already um and then I went there and they touched my stomach and like hmm we really don't know what could be going on i told them hey i'm in a lot of pain my back is aching my lower belly is aching my waist is aching and they're like yeah i'm sorry we don't really know what the issue is and then i told them that i had tuberculosis about 10 years ago and then um they were like oh maybe it has something to do with the tuberculosis maybe you should have a more intensive checkup so they sent me to a tuberculosis specialist then they sent me home with painkiller and they were like until then take these painkillers hopefully they help um, and then the next day we had to go for holidays in Croatia so we went to Croatia the first two days I was fine and then suddenly again I started to feel a lot of pain in my waist and my lower belly um, and then we went to some kind of and it was like a first aid clinic for the area there because we're not in a big city we're in a small very small town um, the guy who was there that night we went there at about 10 p.m. the guy who was there he checked me and he was like hmm maybe it's kidney stone so he asked me a couple of questions I told him everything that I'm feeling I'm like my waist is aching my lower belly is aching is aching and then he asked me can you move this way can you move that way and sometimes I could sometimes I couldn't and he was like okay I think it's kidney stones he gave me pain medication again and he said if after two hours you're still in pain please go to the hospital like don't try to be strong please just go to the hospital that night Jochen was like you know what let's just go to the hospital because we were closer to the hospital than we would have been if we had to go back home and then drive to the hospital so we dropped to the hospital in split we got there around i'll say 10 o'clock in the night and the doctors took a look at me they did an x-ray they did an ultrasound they took my blood they took my urine they touched the stomach i explained the exact same thing i have pain i've had tuberculosis yada 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 he sent me to the gynecologist um, section in the hospital he checked and he said oh you have a myoma uh, do you know what that is i was like no he's like okay it's a fibroid um, it's a tumor it's not cancerous but when you get back to germany make sure that you go to your gynecologist i'm like okay but is this something i really really need to take very seriously like how dangerous it is is it he was like no it's fine it's fine you don't really need to stress a lot but when you go back make sure to see a gynecologist about it i was like okay fine i went back to the doctors they had my results x-ray ultrasound everything blood urine and they're like you're fine we don't see anything you are fine the only thing that we think might be the issue is that 
you are you have kidney stones but we cannot see them yet and i was like huh okay fine i went back home with pain medication as well throughout the vacation i was managing i was okay i could go around and all of that mm. when we got back to germany i went back to see the doctor and she was like oh, you're still in pain we really really don't see what the issue is they did test um i took my test from croatia with me and she was like if they did the test in croatia and they saw nothing then it's probably nothing but again wait for your appointment with the tuberculosis um experts and let's see what they say yeah i could not wait um and then i said okay i'm just going to go to the ambulance section it's like the first aid section of the hospital i went there and the lady was like oh you have to go see your um your gp first if you don't have a gp we can send you to a gp and i was like oh my god i know how this process goes i'm going to see the gp they are going to tell me that they don't see anything because they have already done tests i don't know what to do so i look for another um, house uh, another gp around me um i went there and immediately i went into her room i lay down on the table and this lady touched my stomach and she's like oh you're pregnant i was like nah i'm not pregnant <laughs> she's like yeah you're pregnant I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, yeah, the last time I touched the uterus and it was this hard, the person was pregnant. And I just started crying. I mean, I didn't physically cry. My body started letting out tears. I didn't even know how to explain it. My body started letting out tears. I was like, oh, what is happening? I cannot be pregnant. She was like, when was your last period? I told her. She's like, oh, then you're probably not pregnant. You're probably not pregnant. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please. I've told this story to my to Joachim, to my sister, friends, and they're like, what kind of doctor is this that goes ahead to tell you that you're pregnant or you're not pregnant? Please take it easy on this woman. I'm, I think she she also had this kind of excitement on her face, and I don't know why, but she was excited. And she was like, oh my God, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and then that day she sent me to another hospital, but this hospital is, um, they are specialized in prenatal, pregnancy the host kind of hospital so i went there um they did a test they did an examination the first the first gynecologist i saw she was like hmm i need to consult one of my other colleagues because i can see that you have fibroids she said i can see you have two fibroids remember the, the doctor in croatia said i had one so this one said remember you have two fibroids but again i have to consult with my colleague so she brought in another colleague they had a look asked me the same questions we can see that you have two fibroids um with how big they are we think they need to be taken out um, also the position we think that you should take them out but please go see your gynecologist so that she can refer you to another clinic so i had an appointment with my gynecologist she went and she checked me as well and then she referred and she was like but you were here one year ago you had your uh, yearly checkup i didn't see anything so i'm i really cannot explain how they grew so fast because the pain progressed so quickly within a period of like six eight weeks i was in so much pain and then suddenly they saw one two three five boys and it's like okay yeah she referred me to a clinic i booked an appointment there it was i had to wait for three weeks for the appointment i went there i saw the doctor and then one other thing that struck me about this clinic was all of the doctors there are men and then the receptionists are women so i asked one of the the men working there i was like why are all the doctors men and i was like oh i don't know maybe it's just the coincidence ha 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 i was like huh okay but even the doctor that i had to see i mean i'm going under the knife right something is going to be done to me while i am half asleep i need to be able to understand exactly what is going to be done to me i need all of my questions answered and i was asking this guy questions of course i've never had this procedure done and even if i had if I have questions, please answer my questions. This guy, sometimes he was just shutting me off as if I was dumb or I was stupid. And I was like, dude, I'm asking these questions for a reason. Like, please, can you just be patient and answer my questions? But then again, I was like, okay, if I have to go under the knife with this guy, then maybe I should not piss him off and I should be a little bit kind so that we have a good relationship and he remembers that we have a good relationship while I'm under the knife. Because at that point, in at that point, he is in control of my life. Like, there's nothing I can do, right? So I kind of toned down the questions I was answering. But again, I was still really annoyed. I was like, hmm, I'm not comfortable with the way you have handled this situation. And I'm sure he noticed it because he was like, okay, if you want a second opinion, of course you can have a second opinion. But um, I would recommend that we take it out. The first available date for um, surgery is this date. 
um, these are different places where you can go find out if you want a second opinion. I was like, yeah, sure, I want a second opinion. I booked an appointment with my gynecology so she can refer me to a second place. Actually, my appointment is in about an hour. So after this video, I have to go for my appointment. So it's been really interesting finding out that I have fibroids. When I talked to my mom about it, she also told me she had fibroids and she took them out. I don't even have this, this memory it does not exist for me because I don't remember. Yeah, my mom had it after they took it out. I have a friend who also had fibroids. That's the only person I know in my life who had fibroids. I also spoke to my cousin. She also had fibroids. But also another thing is the fibroids can shrink by themselves. So has shrunk on their own and she didn't need surgery. Um, but yeah, that is the current situation. I think I can show you guys what my stomach looks like. I even took some pictures as well. Um, but let me show you what my stomach looks like. I don't know how well you can see it, but the lower part of my belly right here, it's always been like this. It's always been like this, but it's swollen now and very, very hard. But yeah, that is the update that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm going to bring you guys along with this fibroid journey, given that I only knew one person in my life who had it. But yet over 50% of women are most likely going to get it in their lifetime, which is crazy. Fingers crossed and I pray everything goes smoothly. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and listening. And um, if you've had fibroids, please share what your experience has been like, um, what you did, what you thought. I'd really like to know. And, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.